Welcome back, survivalists. So I really believe that hammock camping is far superior than tent camping in a lot of different ways. Although there's definitely one area that I think tent camping has the advantage over hammock camping. So the way it's not superior to tent camping is kind of that barrier to entry and how easy it is for somebody just to jump right in and start camping using this equipment. So there's a bit of a learning curve to hammock camping. There's some essential and some basic knowledge that you really want to have before you go out there and just start hammock camping. So this includes how to set everything up, what equipment is used, and how to tie a couple of basic knots. And I really think that the knot tying aspect is what most people get intimidated by and what they're least familiar with. So today I'm putting together a complete guide of all the knots that you need to learn before you go hammock camping. Stay tuned. Now before we jump into the actual knots, I wanna go over some basic terminology and just some, some basic, some fundamental principles of knot tying. And we're gonna be building on these fundamentals throughout the video. So the first thing I wanted to find is just the difference between a loop and a bite. All right, so if you have a cord and it crosses over itself like this, this is a loop, right? Pretty basic. But if they do not cross over each other, if they're like that, that is a bite, okay? And many knots kind of build on that. Many knots consist of nothing but loops and bites. So it is important that you know the difference between the two. Now, a quick little hack to create a loop is all you really need to do is just twist the cord with your hand and that will automatically create a loop for you to use. So the next phrase I want you to understand is what is a toggle? So let's say we create a loop and we stick a bite through that loop and we cinch down. Now if we pull on this cord, that bite is gonna come right through there and it's gonna completely untie. So what we wanna do is we can stick a toggle through the bite like this and that'll keep our knot in place. So this is known as a toggle, and it's very common to see people using bites with toggles in camping. Some other basic terminology is that the end of the cord that you are manipulating and you're using, this is called the working end, where the other end is called the standing end. So let's say you create a loop like this and you're feeding one end through, this is the working end that you're feeding through the knot, where the other end and your other hand is called the standing end, it does not move. Now there are two really basic knots I wanna kinda of get out of the way and just make sure you have a good grasp on them before we start working on the other knots. Because many of these other knots we're gonna use incorporate these two very basic and simple knots. So the first one's just an overhand knot. So you probably already know this, create an overhand knot, you create a loop, you take the working end and you feed it through that loop. That is called an overhand knot. Now if you're gonna make an overhand knot, but you have something through this loop that you create, like say a tree, and that's called a half hitch. So let me show you what that looks like. So if we wrap this around the tree, then you wrap it around, you pull it through the loop, that is called a half hitch. Now I gotta be honest, a half hitch is kind of a useless knot. This really doesn't do much good for you. But when it becomes really powerful is when you combine it with other knots or you do multiple half hitches. So a really common one is a double half hitch. So let's do another one where you take this working end, you bring it through the loop that you just made. Now we have a double half hitch, and that's actually a pretty decent knot that you see pretty commonly. Another common knot that you'll see is you'll do your first half hitch, you go to do your second half hitch, but instead of feeding the working end completely through, you work a bite through instead. You cinch it down. Now you have a double half hitch, but it has a bite here. And the advantage to that is that it's really easy to take that down. All you need to do is pull on this working in here and the entire knot comes undone. I also want to point out that there are multiple knots that you can use for everything I'm showing you today. I'm just kind of showing you my preferred method of doing it and which ones I like to use. But every single knot that I show you today, there's probably three or four different knots that you could replace that one with. But for me, I really have two criteria for all the knots I'm going to show you today. One is that they are simple. I like simple knots. I do not like complicated knots because I, I always forget how to do them, honestly. So all the knots I'm gonna use today, they're all simple knots and a lot of them build off of that half hitch and the overhand knot. The second criteria is that they're all easy to take apart. 
This is pretty important, especially with hammock camping, because you gotta remember everything that you set up, you need to take down, possibly the very next day. So all the knots I'm gonna use today, they're very easy to undo, and they're easy to disassemble the entire hammock setup. So the first thing that you wanna set up is gonna be your ridge line. And your ridge line is gonna be used to set up your tarp or your rain fly. And your ridge line is actually composed of two different knots. So on the first tree that you tie your ridge line, our goal is just to secure uh, the rope to the tree. So what you want is to have some sort of fixed loop on this end of your ridge line. There's a couple of different knots that you can use for this. You can use a bowline, you can use a figure eight knot. But what I like to do is actually take my working end and fold it over itself so that it's doubled up like this and then create, just tie a simple overhand knot. So create a loop there and feed that through the loop. Okay, just like that. That's one of the most basic knots and now you have a secure loop tied to one end of your ridge line. And when you do create this loop, you wanna make it fairly big and I'll get to why in just a second. So now that we have this loop on one end of your ridge line, you need to, need to fix it to the tree. And probably one of the best ways I find doing this is wrap it around the tree once. You have the loop here. Now you need to feed the rest of your cordage through that loop. So I have a hank of paracord here. I'm gonna feed it through. And when you pull on it, as you can see, it cinches up against the tree. And now you have this firmly tied to the tree. And now you can go on and work on your other end of the ridge line. Now there is one disadvantage to this knot and is that if you let the slack out, it's very easy for this knot to kind of fall down and actually come down the tree. So there are some other techniques that you can use if you want to more firmly affix it to this uh, tree. So one way you can do that is with that loop, wrap the loop around the tree and create a bite with this part of the cord through that loop and place a toggle through it just like that. Now you kind of cinch it up. And the friction and the extra tension created with this toggle and the extra cord will keep this knot up against this tree so you don't have to worry about it falling um, as much. And then when you're ready to untie this, it's super easy. You kind of loosen it up, you take the toggle out, and it comes right undone. Now there is a third way that I also see people uh, affix a loop like this to a tree as well. So same thing, you're gonna wrap it around the tree. This time, you're gonna wrap it around your standing end, and now you're gonna wrap the working end around the tree again in the opposite direction. So now, once again, we're gonna take the standing end and create a bite through our loop and stick a toggle in there. Now we're gonna kind of cinch up this entire thing up against the tree. And really what you've done is just you created more friction points there to really uh, affix this to the tree much more securely. And once again, I mean, I could probably hang this directly from here without any problem. You know, and that's gonna hold up a good bit of weight and I could walk away and go do other things and not have to worry about this coming undone from the tree. So now that we have one end firmly affixed to the other tree, now what we wanna create is a tensioning knot on our second tree. So for this, we're gonna use a trucker's hitch. Now there are a few different tensioning knots you can use, but I like creating a trucker's hitch. So to create a tr trucker's hitch, the first thing you need to do is create a loop in your standing end. And you don't want it to be too close to the tree. I'd say right about here. Once again, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do the overhand knot technique if you wanted to. But uh, what I would like to do is actually, I don't know the name of this loop, but I just call it a loop with a bite. So we're gonna create a loop. And then we're gonna create a bite through that loop, just like this. Now it is important which side of the cordage you use for your bite through the loop. And for this, you wanna use your working end. And I'll tell you why, because we're gonna wrap around this tree and we're gonna pull on this loop. And by work, using the working end, the loop is going to, it's gonna stay like this. It may even get a little bit bigger by pulling on this loop. Now let's say we did it using uh, the standing end. So let's say we create a bite. 
So we create a loop and we create a bite from the standing end like this. All right. Now what happens when you pull on this, it actually is cinches up on top of itself like that. And that, that is useful in a lot of situations, but not in this situation. Okay, so you want to create a loop and use the working end to create a bite. And once again, you want to make sure you, you do this about a foot or, or so away from the tree. So now that we have our loop like this, we're going to wrap our working end around the tree and we're actually going to feed it back through this loop. What's great is that now we can really pull on this and really cinch it up. I'm going to wrap the, the remainder of the working end around here. And as you can see now, we can really crank on this and make it as tight as we want. Or you can kind of loosen it up a little bit here. Now to tie this off, all we're going to do is a couple of half hitches. So there's your first half hitch. And once again, just a half hitch on itself. Uh, it's not the most useful thing. So let's do at least two half hitches here. And that's just going to tie off our, our uh, working end. And there you go. That is your ridge line. And when you need to undo this, all you need to do is pull on this bite on your second half hitch. Your first half hitch should come undone easily enough. And then the entire thing will quickly come undone. And this knot, you just pull on it and it goes away. So that is the two knots that you need to know for your ridge line. So now we've got our ridge line set up. Now I do want to note, typically I put my ridge line kind of right about the top of my head. So I could actually stand up underneath of it. But just for demonstration purposes, I have it much lower today. So now we need to affix our tarp, our rain fly to our ridge line. Now a really simple way is just to throw it over top of the ridge line, and some people do that, but a preferred method is actually to hang it right underneath of the ridge line. There's a couple ways of doing that as well. I've seen some people use some carabiner type things just to attach it to it, but a more common method is using a Persic knot. So before we can even get into the Persic knot, you need to have a short strand of 550 cord. This may actually be a little bit too long, but then we need to tie these two ends together so we have one loop. Now there's many different ways to tie two pieces of cord together. One is you just put them next to each other and do an overhand knot. But that's not really advantageous for what we're doing here. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of strength when you pull them sideways. Another knot you could use is just a square knot, right? You do a simple overhand knot, then you do an overhand knot in the opposite direction. Right, a square knot's a very common one in camping, but we're not doing that one today either. And what we're gonna be using is the fisherman's knot. And once again, this is a very simple knot, uh, which is why I like it. So take one of your ends and create a loop and feed your working end through it to create uh, just a simple overhand knot. This is what we covered in the very beginning. This is a simple overhand knot. Now take the other end and feed it through that knot. Okay, you can even cinch down if you wanted to. Now you're gonna do the same thing with this end uh, except you're going to do it around this part here. So essentially you're creating two different overhand knots with, with each end of the cord. Okay, and so what you're left with is the two knots here, two simple overhand knots, and when you pull them together, they cinch the whole thing together and now you have a nice little loop. So if you do it correctly, you should have two parallel cords on one side and two X's on the other side. So now that we have our loop, now we can tie the Persic knot and attach this loop to our ridge line. So we, what you're gonna wanna do is wrap it around here once and feed it through itself like that. All right, so now you've got pretty much two loops there, one big loop here. Now we're gonna wrap it around the ridge line again, feed it through this big loop, and then do that a third time. And you wanna kinda pay attention to these uh, wraps up top here. Uh, you don't really want them crossing, all right? So now we're gonna pull this down and what you should be left with, you have to kind of play with it, but you should have six wraps around this ridge line and then one wrap around all six of them kind of cinching them down together. Now what's really interesting is when you kind of loosen this up, you can move this back and forth no problem. Once you put some weight on it though, you know, this thing is not gonna move at all. It really cinches down all six of those cords and it, it doesn't go anywhere. So you could really adjust this and there's gonna be a lot of pressure on this um, and this won't move up and down the ridge line. There's been cases of people using this knot to save them their lives. 
So let's say you have a rope tied up to this tree. If you had four Persic knots like this, you could literally climb that rope with them. All you do is stick each hand, each foot in one of these, you slide it up, and then you put all your weight on it, and that rope is not moving at all. And you kind of do this all four with your two feet and your two hands, and rock climbers absolutely have fallen off cliffs, tied these knots, and they kind of work their way up the rope using this exact knot. So it's a really cool knot to know, and it really uh, comes in handy for setting up tarps like this. So now that I've got three Persic knots attached to my ridge line, now I can start attaching my tarp and my rain fly to our Persic knot. So how I'm gonna do that is that mine has these little eyelet holes right in here. So I'm just gonna kind of double this up here and feed it through this eyelet hole. Then I'm gonna use a toggle, a little stick, and feed it through that bite there and kind of pull down. And now I'm gonna do the same exact thing all throughout here. And what's great is now I can adjust these to wherever I need them and create as much or as little tension as I need on my rain fly. So I've now got three Persic knots holding my tarp to my ridge line. What I love about this, let's say I wanna move the entire tarp down that direction. All I need to do is grab these Persic knots and I can just pull all three of them down in that direction. If I wanna make this really tight and rigid, all I need to do is just slide it up and this Persic knot is not gonna go anywhere uh, in that direction. And when I'm ready to tear down my camp, it's super easy. Maybe I'll slide this down to get a little bit of slack, but all I need to do is take out the toggle here holding it up and the entire thing comes undone from my tarp. So now that we've got the tarp attached to the ridge line, there's really only one other knot that you're gonna to need to know to finish setting up your, uh, your tarp or your rain fly. So now that we've got our tarp set up to the ridge line, now we need to affix the four corners to some stakes in the ground. So on the other end of this paracord, I just used a double half hitch with a bite, so I can easily disassemble that. So to attach the tarp to a stake like this, what you want is another tensioning knot. Now we could use the trucker's hitch again, but what I prefer for something like this is just a simple taut line hitch. It's actually a pretty simple knot. So you're gonna wrap it around the stake, you take your working end and kind of create a loop there. So wrap it around a second time of your standing end. Now we're gonna come to the outside and wrap it around one more time around your standing end and then feed it through that little loop that you just created. And this is a taut line hitch and what's great about it, it is a tensioning knot. So you can kind of get some slack and then you pull on it to get some tension on it. And for the most part, it stays there. So the taut line hitch is a great knot if you don't have a lot of weight being put on it. I wouldn't use something like this to attach your ridge line because with that amount of weight, it may pull the knot free. But for something like this, which doesn't have a lot of weight, the taut line hitch is a fantastic knot. And it's also a really simple knot. You literally just wrap the working end around the standing end three times. So I've got the ridge line and the tarp down now. Before we move on to setting up the hammock, I've got one final knot I wanna show you regarding the ridge line, and that's how to tie a hank of paracord. So a hank is just a really neat and organized way to keep all your paracord. A little tip is just to always use the same ridge line every single time you go hammock camping. So what I have here is the paracord, and this is the loop that we initially made. So I'm gonna make a hank of paracord. I'm gonna have this loop hanging out of it so we can easily access it next time we set up our ridge line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this loop in and I'm gonna kinda just sit it here out of the way between my pinky and my ring finger. And now I'm gonna take this hank and I'm gonna wrap it around my thumb and we're gonna do a figure eight just like this. And we're going to continue to do this figure eight until we have this entire ridge line uh, wrapped around these two fingers. And you notice this, that this uh, loop here is just kind of hanging out of the way. All right, so now I've got majority of this paracord wrapped around my two fingers in a figure eight like that. I only have a little bit left. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off and try to keep that figure eight uh, shape if you can. And so here's the uh, cord we're gonna be working with. We're gonna kind of pinch it off here and we're gonna start wrapping around itself. Now you can be as neat with this or as sloppy as you like. If you're going to be putting this away for a while, it's gonna be, it's gonna be put away for a good month or so, keep it nice and neat and organized and really you know, try to get these um, cords as close to one another as you can. You're really gonna be appreciating it next time you're out camping. 
So I actually didn't leave enough for myself. Really, I like to put these wraps all the way down as far as possible. But now I'm down to the final wrap. So this final one, I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a gap there, wrap it around once more, and then pull this through and kind of cinch it down. So what we've got here is this is one end, and then the other end right here is in the center of the cord. So what I love about this is you can throw this in your bag just like this. It'll keep this shape most likely until you're out here again using it. But this is going to be for setting up your ridge line. And what happens is you can pull on this and it'll pull out the cord, but it'll keep this fundamental shape for a very long time. And it just makes everything so much more neater and organized. And look at this, I've already pulled out a lot but it's still, because of these wraps, it's still nice and neat and organized. So that's called a hank of cord. And yeah, man, by far, this is one of the best hacks out there just to keep everything organized. And you've already got your ridge line already set up. It's got the loop in the end, and so you're ready to go. So I'm often asked, what is the best knot to tie a hammock up to a tree? And the answer is no knot. You don't really wanna be using knots in a rope to affix your hammock to a tree. And most companies don't do that nowadays. Most of them use some sort of strapping system. Now, different companies will have slightly different variations of that. Uh, so today I've got two different brands. I've got a single nest from e &O. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up one of these and what their strapping system looks like. And then I've got one from Hennessy Hammock. So this one is about $40 for the single nest. This one, the Explorer XL, I think it's about $350. And they have very different strapping systems and very different ways of attaching to their uh, straps and attaching to the tree. So let's start with the Hennessy Hammock. Let's see what we get in the bag with this one. So when we open it up, it comes with two different straps that we're gonna use. And these are called tree straps. And these, all they do is you wrap around the tree they have loops here, and then this is what we're actually going to tie our Hennessy hammock to is these two loops which go around the tray. And this one, we also have a rain fly and a uh, bug net here. And then we've got the actual hammock itself. Actually, this is the hammock and the bug net all in one right here. Now, one of the biggest reasons you wanna use tree straps is that rope can actually damage the tree. So if you're going to a popular park, if everybody used rope, uh, it would really strip the bark away from the tree. It could really hurt the tree, even kill the tree possibly. So a lot of people really recommend these tree straps instead. Now, I'll be honest, this Hennessy hammock really confused me when I first got it. I really had a hard time figuring out how to attach it to the tree properly. And that's because this one doesn't actually use a knot to tie the hammock to the tree strap. It uses lashing. It uses a figure eight lashing. And they just say do that three, four, five times and it'll kind of hold itself up there. So these are the straps that come with the Hennessy hammock. And how they're designed is that you're supposed to wrap it around the tree one time like this and then you feed the rope, which is, so this is permanently, the other end of this is permanently attached to the hammock. And you wanna feed that through the bottom here and feed it through both of these loops just like this. Then you pull the excess out until you get your hammock adjusted to where you want it to be. Now there's one major disadvantage to this right off the bat and that you can only use these on smaller trees like this. I learned that the hard way the very first time I went to use this is I had a great big tree. I was trying to tie this around and it really just did not work out very well at all. So unfortunately you need a smaller tree like this. And what's interesting is that you don't actually tie this to the straps, you would lash it to the straps. And according to the manufacturer, they say that your rope is going to last a lot longer by doing it that way rather than tying a uh, semi-permanent knot. So what we're gonna do here is actually use a figure eight lashing. So we're gonna take our working end, go over our standing end, go underneath of it, come back through and do the same with this gap here between the tree. And that is gonna be one figure eight lashing right there. Then we're gonna repeat that. So now we've got three figure eight lashings. Now really, if you wanted to, you could do this another three, four, five times until you've used up all of this cord. Now if you do enough figure eight lashings, you don't really need to tie off this excess cordage here, but if you really wanted to, you could do a double half hitch with a bite as well. So that's how you set up a Hennessy hammock using their strapping system. So I gotta be honest, I love my Hennessy hammock. It is incredibly comfortable and it is night and day compared to sleeping in something like an ENO single nest. However, I really am not wild about their strapping system. Um, I don't like these straps and that you can't go around large trees with them. 
I, I think this lashing system's a little, a little too complicated. You know, it took me a while to really figure that out. Like I've said in this video, I like simplicity. I like simple solutions when I go camping. So believe it or not, I prefer the ENO strapping system compared to the Hennessy hammock strapping system. So now let's take a look at how to set up an ENO hammock. So to set up your ENO hammock, you've got your tree straps here and you got a loop on one end, another end that has multiple smaller loops. So we're gonna wrap this looped end around. And just like we did with our ridge line, we're then gonna feed the other end of our strap through this first loop. Okay, and that's gonna cinch up on the tree like this. And now you've got multiple loops here to choose from of where you want to uh, connect the carabiners which attach to your hammock to these loops. And this is how you adjust where your hammock hangs. Now there's pros and cons to this method. Uh, one obvious pro is that it's super simple, it's super quick, super intuitive of how to set this thing up. One con though is that you only have so many placements, so you can't quite get a precise um, spot of where to set it up. Let's say you really needed it right about here, you can't really do that unless you kind of adjust the height and everything. But this is how you use the ENO tree strap to set up an ENO hammock. If you guys want to see more of my videos all about hammock camping, I've got an entire playlist right over here of other videos I've done. Hope you guys learned something today. Hope you're not quite as intimidated by it and you have a little bit better understanding of a lot of the knots and a lot of the equipment that kind of goes into hammock camping. I definitely enjoy it. I think it's a far more enjoyable experience compared to traditional tent camping. Hope you guys get a chance to get out there and enjoy it as well, but I gotta get going. I'll see you guys over in the next video. So long.